Hello, welcome back. Today we've got two questions on the PCR procedure method. So pause the video here, try these questions out and continue on to see how I answer them. Okay, so for this question, I would say it's quite hard if you don't know what you're looking for, right? But let's read it. So describe two changes you would make to the student's procedure and explain how these changes would improve electrophoresis. Okay. When I get questions like this, where they've given me like a box and there's descriptions and stuff, I would look at what the question is saying, as in the procedure. Procedure is electrophoresis. And without looking at the description, I just think to myself, right, so uh, this is what happens, you know, these are the steps. Just so that I, I have a framework in my head and I'm doing it so absorbed into the, uh, the you know, the box that I can't see where the improvements are. Okay, so I'd most likely just uh, write down the steps of electrophoresis over here if I was in the exam. Okay, cool. Let's rephrase this question. It says, tell me two things you change and why. Okay. The things you want to look for in electrophoresis practicals are the things I put in orange. So, is there a buffer? Do you need it to run for longer times? Are there any radioactive data that you can identify or visualise the banding patterns? Is there any technique of blotting? Techniques, that's one. For example, southern blotting. And if you don't know what that is, it's not that big of a deal, but I would recommend you have an understanding of, you know, what it entails. So go onto YouTube, just write southern blotting technique, and you'll see, like, these DNA um, genetic companies and organizations making really nice animations to describe and explain what these things are so i would definitely recommend that so even before having read all like the information and stuff i've already got a framework in my head of what i should look for why is because i've looked at the electrophoresis practical in my own time in my own revision and i know what things are come up like come up and also what are the pivotal things that really matter in this procedure but let's read what the box says. We will set up uh, an agrose gel plate and place the DNA samples in the wells at the cathode. Voltage will be passed through the gel for one minute. The gel will then be placed in purified water and we will be able to see the banding pattern of each DNA sample. Okay. Okay. One thing. The first thing I'm going to say is that they said it's for one minute. You know, you can have it for a longer time. Next thing I was going to say is purify water so that it's going to be placed in that and then you're able to see the banding patterns. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Use radioactive dyes. Um, next thing, where is the buffer? You need a buffer for this, right? No mention of that because then that allows the solution to carry the charge. There is no mention of uh, blotting technique. So all those things you can write about, but these are the two ones I picked. Use radioactive dyes. Why? To visualise banding patterns. Use a buffer. Buffer. Why? As the solution carries the charge. Okay. Next one. Modern PCR technique uses DNA polymerase from the bacterium, whatever that says. <laughs> um, why is this enzyme chosen? Right, so it's a two marker and it's a Y. Hmm. This question is notorious for people getting one mark on and only one mark. That's why I've got the purple annotations there, but let's talk through it. To rephrase this question, I would be like, right, so why is this DNA polymerase used? What is the, its property from this bacterium that has allowed it to be used in this process? And then I would talk about, as the second mark, what are the implications of this reason? The important thing here is why. Okay, this point, very easy to get. This point, not so much. <laughs> so let's go back to the first question I had to ask myself. Why is it that this DNA polymerase from this bacterium is used? Because it doesn't denature at 95 degrees Celsius. Okay, okay. But what are the implications of this? Why is this so useful? Well, it means that the PCR can be 
like the cycle can be repeated without stopping. And imagine, right, the enzyme DNA should at 95 degrees Celsius. Well, the cycle won't really run, but also like you probably need to replace it or like not replace it, but it just wouldn't be as effective or it wouldn't be able to like for the cycles to really uh do their due diligence, dare I say, because they keep stopping. But because it doesn't do nature at this temperature, it means that PCR can be repeatedly, um, you know, carried out. And that's why it's so useful. So when you get a two marker and you're thinking, oh gosh, like what the hell do I say for the second mark? Ask yourself, what are the implications of this? And yeah, that's the end of today's episode. Remember, the two most important exam technique tips are Read the question first and state all the obvious points. Over to you. Try some questions and let me know how it goes.